In this video, we're going to look at a deep dive on Scottish mortgage, and it'll also be a look at the process of how to go about selecting an investment trust. So first of all, what's not important is the recent price decline of Scottish mortgage, because that is inevitable in the world of investing. And also don't get fooled by the discount to net asset value because what that is saying is that people are currently unhappy with how some of the unquoted assets of Scottish mortgage are valued and therefore they'll only buy it if it's on a discount. So the first thing to look at when considering an investment trust is the remit of the fund. And the Scottish mortgage, it aims to own some of the world's most exceptional growth companies, it wants to hold them for a long period of time and it can also buy both quoted and unquoted equity. The company is quite keen to stress the long-term nature of the investment trust, so you should look to hold it for five or more years. And it also does warn that the trust can be very volatile because of its holding of so many growth companies. I think this is an interesting remit and it's definitely one that is worth further examination. The hypothesis of Scottish mortgage is that the private equity market is sufficiently developed that many high quality growth companies are using it to seek funding rather than floating on the stock market. And then also that if you sell as soon as a company floats, like most private equity firms do, you might be missing out on strong future returns. Scottish mortgage believes that a few multi-baggers generate the majority of stock market returns and it aims to hold those sorts of companies. So it's got quite a view around the 80-20 principle on returns. Next, we look at the management company and the fund manager. Bailey Gifford is privately held. That means it can take a long-term view, which is good. Scottish Mortgage is a flagship fund, which means that it receives plenty of management attention. Unfortunately, with Bailey Gifford, they have a collegiate approach when they come to selecting investments and they tend to stuff some of their funds full of their top picks. And also it can make it difficult to then sell some of these top picks because Bailey Gifford wants to have a consistent view across all of its funds. So that means that Scottish Mortgage can have long-term holds in markets that are actually changing quite quickly and possibly it holds on to losing positions for too long. With regards to the fund manager, there's been reasonably good quality of tenure here, so I'm quite happy with their track record. Looking at the portfolio of Scottish Mortgage, you might want to pause it on this screen. There's a few key themes that run through that portfolio, namely digitalized world, decarbonization, and technology meets healthcare. And there's some of its major holdings around the outside of this circle. These are some of the major holdings of Scottish Mortgage. I've got the top 10 from the latest fact sheet and some of the largest quoted holdings from Morningstar. And what you can see is that since the end of 2020, Scottish Mortgage has invested over a billion pounds into Moderna, which is quite an odd thing to do because normally the top holding of a fund is something it's bought several years ago. It bought it at maybe a 2% holding and then that holding has since grown. So I do have some concerns as to the allocation of the top 10 assets of Scottish Mortgage. We've also got the one year return on some of the key holdings here. Here are the charts of a couple of holdings of Scottish Mortgage. First is Moderna, which has risen strongly and then fallen back. The next is Ginkgo Bioworks, which has lost over 90% of its value since Scottish Mortgage began purchasing that company. And the fear is that some of the unquoted holdings within Scottish Mortgage have suffered a similar fate, but they're not yet fully reflected in the net asset value. So the key risk here is one of style drift, where the fund has gone from things like loss making companies, but at least they're US quoted to loss making companies that are US, but don't have a stock market quote, and then to further up the risk scale to loss making companies that are Chinese and don't have a stock market quote. And if it has exposure to too much of these, it could have a negative impact on Scottish mortgage. So next, I like to look at how the fund communicates. 
is it good at telling me the valuation multiples of the fund and how that's changing over time so I can get a feel for whether it's expensive or cheap? Does it tell me how many of the companies are profitable or generating cash? And the answer here is I feel it doesn't, but there's a lot of trusts and funds that are in the same boat and don't really give me all the information I'd like. Scottish Mortgage recently had a boardroom bust up with its ex-director MRB Day, where he said there wasn't enough challenge from other directors who lacked investment experience. And also he felt that Scottish Mortgage didn't have enough resources within its private equity team to correctly select the right investments and that the risk profile of Scottish Mortgage had risen significantly in recent years. The result of the bust up was we've got a new chairman at Scottish Mortgage and I hope the new chairman will usher in a new period of better communications with shareholders. So I want to look at the role that Scottish Mortgage could have if it was to enter my portfolio. Would it be a core holding or a satellite holding? I think my conclusion would be that it would just be a satellite holding because of the volatility of some of the holdings. And then also, how does Scottish Mortgage approach risk management? And the answer is, I'm really not sure how it allocates assets and manages risks around things like exposure to China, business to business versus business to consumer, and mature cash generating companies versus early stage companies. I feel that the fund volatility could be better managed. And if that did happen, then we'd get a better investment that was more robust and I'd feel more confident having it in my portfolio. So one good thing about Scottish Mortgage are the low fees. I think the fees come out at about 0.4%, including the charges for the gearing that the fund has. There's also no performance fee. So they would be a limited drag on the fund if it just went sideways for five years. So again, if you can be patient, this is probably a good one to hold rather than maybe something like private equity, where you could see quite a significant impact of fees if there was a, a prolonged period of underperformance. If you're not convinced by Scottish Mortgage, you could look at its sister fund, Bailey Gifford Long Term Global Growth, which is an open ended investment company that has less exposure to unquoted stocks and less gearing. As you can see in this chart, the performance has been fairly similar with Scottish Mortgage taking a bit of a dive recently as there were some concerns around its unquoted assets. So in conclusion, I feel that the fund structure is unique, particularly at this fee structure. Past performance has been strong in places, but it has had elements of luck and it might not be repeated in the future. I think the portfolio would benefit from some de-risking and restructuring. And I like the phrase of Howard Marks, the investor, not the drug dealer, that high price equals high risk, but now we have a lower price. So arguably there's less risk and it is worthwhile looking at Scottish mortgage. But if you do buy, manage the risk and scale in to your position.